this is MCAD Mama, and I want to do a video today over what is MCAD. Sorry, it's a little. There we go. I've got my fun setting. Uh, MCAD, um, it's acronym, you'll see it's spelled M C A D D, and that is shorthand version for medium chain acyl CoA dehydrogenase deficiency. <laughs> it's a long name for a me metabolic disorder. Uh, it basically means they can't break down fat from their bodies or their food for energy. So they um, have to be, they have to eat every so often. At almost 18 months old, she can go 10 hours. Um, this time. In okay. case she cannot break down the medium chain fatty acids, there's a long, a medium, and a short. She can break down the long to get to the medium, but she can't break down the medium to get to the short. And what happens when they go long periods without eating, um, either when they're a baby and they're sleeping, or at this age when they get sick with like a stomach bug or a virus, they get hypoglycemic, which can cause uh, them to be lethargic and not want to eat even more in the end. That can also lead to buildup of harmful uh, material in their bodies, and which can cause seizures and comas, and a lot of series of uh, complications. Uh, this is where the enzyme called the medium chain acyl-CoA dehydrogenase, which is MCAT, um, is either missing or not working properly. Uh, in my daughter's case, it is mutated. She has a a double chromosome mutation. She has a severe form of the mutation. Uh, as some people know, for each gene, you have two chromosomes, one from the mom and one from the dad, and both of hers were mutated when we did genetic testing. This is rare. Um, I've seen one in 15,000, one in 17,000, and even one in 18,000. I actually do not currently have any other relatives that have this disorder. But there's a 50% chance that she will have kids that will have this, or a 50% chance that she'll have kids with, that's a carrier, and then we have a 25% chance of any of our children uh, either being a carrier or having it. Um, signs that um, you need to look for that you may need to go to the hospital or call your doctor is if they're really sleepy, they're irritable, they don't want to eat, they may have, a, which may also come with fever or diarrhea, or vomiting. All these signs that they're sick, especially young. Um, but I will tell you this from experience, especially when they're young. It can happen very quickly. Um, they could be, you would think, oh, they went three hours without eating, they're fine. There's no big deal. And then, next thing you know, they're not, they're being lethargic and they're not really responding. Um, they don't seem to have any energy. Uh, what do we do for kids that have MCAT? Um, L-carnitine, level carnitine, um, is a medicine that they give MK kids. Uh, it helps the body make energy and helps get rid of the waste uh, that the kid can build up. Because see, a medium chain, and that fatty acid would go into the mitochondria and the cells to make energy. It's so big because it can't break it down, it won't fit. And then if it does manage to squeeze in, the body can't get rid of it. So it builds up. Uh, as, and it, it can actually poison them from the inside. Um, the big one is obviously avoid long time without eating. Um, like I said, her time is 10, and I know about 12 hours, um, like during the day when she's sick, I know that's kind of like, uh, no, I need to take her to the doctor. Um, and then at night, I know if, if she manages to sleep like 12 hours, it's really hard to wake her up. She's really, uh, leave me alone, let me sleep. She doesn't want to eat. So you have to wake them up and give them 
So I'm pretty sugary. I'm sorry, we're gonna look it up. I'm currently making lunch as well. I'm making a Z for the kids for lunch. And my alarm's going off on my stove. <laughs> I don't know if you could hear, but Belle is in there going. <laughs> uh, and then they get to be about a year old. Um, mine, my daughter is on what they call a heart healthy diet. It's a lot of carbs and proteins. Um, she's not really supposed to eat a lot of like hamburger, it has a lot of grease in it, a lot of like deep fried or baked food. Um, but the, the dietitian will go into that into deep context because there's foods that she can have, but there's only a certain amount that she can have. I think like uh, peanut butter, she's only allowed to have like two teaspoons. If I was to make a sandwich, you can have like barely any peanut butter on it. So, um, call your doctor. Um, in another video, I'm going to go over the emergency protocol that they give you when your child is diagnosed with this. They will give you an all-call doctor. They basically call the number, you leave your phone number, and it basically works like a paging system, and they will call you back. Um, Tell them everything if she's throwing, if they're throwing up, if they're just not wanting to eat. Because once they go a certain amount of time and they haven't reached a certain level of intake, they will um, call you in and have them hooked up to an IV, even if there's no other symptoms but other than low intake. Even if you're only there for a few hours and you get an IV and they're like, oh, she's eating now. She feels fine. She can go home. Well, that's better than having to go into the ER in the middle of the night and they can't really figure out what's going on. As far as I can, my experience with MCAT and the doctors have told me this, I have not had any long term effects really, other than the eating and kind of watching the diet. Um, she's in normal health, she runs around, plays developmentally, she is actually ahead of the pack. She's uh, on the high end of the percentile. So, um, this is a genetic disorder. Uh, I don't think I mentioned that yet. I get asked quite a bit if she'll grow out of it. Um, it is a genetic disorder. It is passed on either by parents already having the disorder or parents being carriers. In my case, me and my husband were carriers. We did not know, and um, we passed it on. My other child may be a carrier. Um, in most some states, some stances, some circumstances, they cannot be tested until they're 18. Um, but I knew I wanted to wait until she was a teenager. Uh, that way she, they'd know before, there's a t um, before they get into the position where they might have children. I want them to know whether or not, because it can be serious, especially when you don't know, like in our cases. Uh, we had a genetic counselor when we were first admitted for MCAD that talked to us about our risk for having another child with it and our history. Uh, you can get a, a further diagnosis by doing genetic testing. They do like a full genetic panel makeup. I'm sorry, my bangs are too long to do anything with, but they're not long enough to go behind my ear. Um, and they basically confirmed the diagnosis of MCAD, and um, it, it said that she had the severe form of the mutation. And when that, what, what that did for us is it actually she went from being able to go 12 hours to going 10 hours. Um, but other than that, it really did not affect the care that she is given. Uh, da, da, da. You can have her her their level carnitine. Uh, tested in their levels in their blood. She does that every time we go for a checkup. They to find out whether or not they need to increase the level of carnitine or if her body is uh, starting to level out. Because uh, Addison, my daughter, is actually like almost 30 pounds uh, at almost 18 months. And uh, 
So they have to keep increasing it because of her weight. Now, when they test the blood, it either will be high or low. If it's low, they'll give them more. If it's high, they'll give them less. But she's always been right in the middle, so they just keep it proportionate for her weight. Can you find out while you're pregnant? Yes. Amniocosis testing, which is a needle in your that tests the amniotic fluid, and then CVS. I do not know what CVS is. I'm not even. I don't know what that is. If you do, please comment below and let me know. Uh, because I did not do any genetic um, testing when I was pregnant with either of my two children. Uh, I chose not to. Uh, but I think I will next time. It's specific for these for this disorder. Um, Can other members of my family have it? Yes. Children that were born in states that it, the MCAT is not in the newborn screening could have it. Uh, most states do. My daughter is three, and she was born in another state, and they had it on theirs. Um, but most people have, if they have it, they have issues within the first year of life, from what I've been told. During... Uh, can a child have an MCAT affect me during pregnancy? It says you might be sick to have excessive vomiting, abdominal pain, high blood pressure, jaundice, um, and some others. The, I did not actually have any difficulties. I actually didn't even gain a lot of weight compared to my first pregnancy. I think I gained 25 to 30 pounds, which is about normal. And I didn't have any complications. I had um, contractions a little earlier. But my first child was born at 36 weeks, so it wasn't, I wasn't a, alarmed, I guess it's, I could say. The only issue I had is I had periods of time where I was starving. Like, I could not eat enough. It didn't matter how much I ate, I wanted more. And then I'd get to a point where then I'd be, like, sick. I ate too much, I was sick. So there was, like, no in-between. It was either starving or I was over overfed. I don't know if that has anything to do with just being pregnant or if it had to do with her, her sugar would bottom out. And then she'd have me eat, 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 eat to get her sugar up. And then by the time her sugar got high enough that she wasn't having me crave all this stuff, that I'd be like, oh, I ate too much. I don't, I don't know if that has anything to do with it or not. Uh, like I said, there is carrier testing. You can test your other children. You can test your, your other siblings can get tested. But some places they do have you wait till you're 18. MCAD can also sometimes be called MCAD MC80 deficiency uh, academic. I'm just gonna put this up here on the screen. Let's see if I can do this. Oh, there we go. And more information. I hope this isn't backwards. It probably will be. I'm sorry. Um, but this information I've got here is actually from the newborn screening dot information website. They, when your child is diagnosed with MCAT or they suspect that it's MCAT, they print off this packet. I actually have a couple of different ones that basically have the same information. This one actually has more information than the others. They print you off a packet that kind of explains it so that you can take your time and read it because they will explain this to you over and over and over. Uh, the level of carnitine. We started off as a newborn at 0 0.06 milliliters. We are now at 1.4 milliliters based on her weight and her body's needs. There, We are lucky. My daughter actually likes the way it tastes and takes the liquid form. I do think there is like a solid, like a pill form that gets dissolved. I might be wrong on that because I know someone whose child could not take it in liquid form. They had to take it in a solid form. But if you have any more questions, if you have any questions, post them below what, what MCAT is. Please ask. Um, but of course, you know, I am a parent of an MCAT child who's about 18 months old. I know a lot because we've had the circumstances where I had to learn fairly quickly. But I am not a specialist. I am not a medical specialist. I am not your metabolic specialist. So if I'm wrong about something, please let me know below. That's fine. Um, 
but please make sure you always talk to your doctors for advice and answers to questions. All right, thank you very much.